Welcome back to Sip Vitality Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And today on Ravens Daily, we're going to talk about four things that came across my desk. Well, three things that came across my desk. One thing that I really just want to kind of get off my chest. So welcome back. Sit back, relax, and let's get into it. All right. So the first thing I want to get into is, is comments. And I always kind of go back and I, we had this thing going with the Jane Doe coming up today, but this kind of comment really just it kind of struck a nerve with me today. And this comment, it says, um, and I think some of you saw in it because some guys have responded to it. It says, uh, stop always being negative and get back to coaching middle schoolers. So really, I kind of don't really respond to some of these because they're really trolls. And I try to stay as positive and as, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? as neutral when I get comments like this as possible. But, um, you know, and I try to be respectful too, because I know my wife wants me to be a certain way. My mother-in-law is watching this and I try to uphold a certain standard to it, but it's getting to the point where I'm really about to be my mother's son. And, uh, because I'm kind of getting tired of, it. and a lot of times I see these comments like this because it's one thing to, to not agree with the football take. And, but it's another thing to try to take personal shots. And so I'm almost getting to the point where I'm going to start firing back. And um, that's going to be what it is. Like, because I, I, I take the high road a lot. I take the high road a lot. I do. I do. I take the high road a lot. I see a lot of comments. Sometimes I just delete them. Sometimes I just let them sit there. But the high road going to run out. It's going to run out. And when I start firing back, don't 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 be offended. Cause I do research. I do research. So just don't be offended when I start firing back because I ain't offend, you know, I ain't said a lot of stuff about a lot of stuff that's been said. So when I start firing back, don't be offended. Cause y'all started this. So when I come, I'm gonna come correct. Just know that. I am my mother's son. And she's loud. She's Gonna tell you how it is. She don't sugarcoat nothing. And so when that person comes out, just know you've been warned. And whoever whoever happens to be the first person to get it, I'm sorry. You're just gonna get it. Now, just because I don't agree with all the moves that the Costa makes, that don't make your fan fandom better than mine. It really don't. It really don't. It, it some channels praise every move. You know the Ravens make. That's not me. That's not me. I'm gonna do my research. I'm gonna check and see if the player's good. I'm gonna check and see if he's bad. And then I'm gonna come tell you how I feel about it. I ain't gonna just see a move and be like, "Bam, that's the greatest move since sliced bread." No. I'm gonna go try to find out some stuff. So that's why a lot of the times when they make moves, you don't get a, a instant reaction from me because I got to I got to go see if. What the deal is. I got to go do some research on him. Especially if I don't know the player. Now, when we met, when we got Derrick Henry, all right, everybody knows Derrick Henry. Everybody knows his track record. But with these lesser known names, because we don't make splash moves, I got to go do research. I got to go try to find out who, what, when, where, why. That's why you don't get a video right then and there. Because I got to do research. I ain't just going to fluff you and tell you some crap just to get some views. I'm going to do my research. Try to say, hey, he's good at this, he's bad at that, this, that, and the other. So I'm just not going to be happy at every move that's made. I just I just can't do it. Now, with that being said, Eric DaCosta does have a hard job. Being a GM of a football team is extremely, extremely, extremely hard. By no means am I saying that he's good or bad at his job because I don't know the first like the pressure that comes with that at all. At all. All I'm saying is I'm a fan of the team. And just like every other fan, I'm going to react to it. I'm going to react to it. I just happen to do it on YouTube. Which some of y'all like, some of y'all don't. And even some of the people that don't like it, you still tune in. 
which is good because it's good conversational pieces. We all have opinions. My opinion is not better than yours. Your opinion is not better than mine. So as long as we can keep it conversational and don't get personal, I think we, we'll be good. But just keep them personal, you know. You don't have to keep them. You, you know what? I'm finna say keep them personal tax to yourself, but you can bring them. And when I, when I fire back, I don't want to hear shit. That's all I got to say. When I start firing back, because I've been the, I be the, out of all our little group, I think I'd be the most even killed person besides Chris. And I think I'd be more even killed than Chris, because Chris fire him too. Y'all just don't catch him. But when I start firing back, I don't want to hear nothing. All right, but let's get into what we're here for. Let's, let's, I didn't got out this soapbox. Let's get into what we're here for. So, uh, the Ravens signed Kadar Holman. Now, a little background on Kadar Holman. Again, like I told you, I have to do research. He's 29 years old. He's a six-round pick from the uh, Green Bay Packers in the 2019 draft. He played for the Packers in 2019 and 2020. But here's where I have an issue. I can't find any information on Holman from 2021 or 2022. I don't know if he was hurt. I don't know if he was on a practice squad. I don't know what. But then we pop up and have stats again from last year. So that's what's puzzling me. Like, I can't find any information on Holman for, for two years. It's like he disappeared. I don't know if he was out of the league or, I like, I... I just, I can't find information. Like, if, if y'all got it, link me to it. I Like, on PFF and on uh, my other thing I look at, like, nothing. Like, nothing. So, I if he was a ghost, or, I assumed he was hurt when I first saw it. When I went back and looking, looking for other stuff, I can't find it. So, that's puzzling to me that a guy would be out of the league like that and then pop right back in and play. Every game last year with the Texans. He didn't start, but he played every game last year with the Texans. Had a PFL grade of 62.1. Most of his snaps came versus the Atlanta Falcons. And I'm going to take a look at that game either sometime today or tomorrow. And I'll be breaking that game down. So you might see a quick video about Kadar Holman and his game versus the Falcons last year to kind of see what kind of player we got uh, versus the Falcons. But the Ravens signed Kadar Holman. And um, really, to me, this is a signing to kind of put pressure on Pepe put pressure on J. Loma Davis because those two cats just can't stay healthy. So we got to bring in guys like this because the guys we drafted to, to produce can't stay healthy. So you have to bring in, I don't want to say unknowns because, man, do the NFL, so he got to be known. But signings to make you say, hmm, say who? And if, you know, if you old as me, you know, remember I sent you a whole things to make you say, hmm. That's what this signing is. But, you know, uh, his PFF grade was 62.1. And you take how you feel about PFF, but I paid for the subscription, so I'm going to use it. So that's, that's where it came from. And again, his most snaps was against the Falcons. So I'll be breaking that game down, looking at it later in detail to kind of see what kind of player we got. But let's move on to the second sign. And I, all right. Now, the Ravens signed Josh Jones. And I mentioned this two days ago when it first happened. But let's kind of get into the details of signing Josh Jones and a little background information on it. So he's 26 years old, and he was a third-round pick by the Cardinals in the 2020, 2020 draft. Uh, played the first three years in Arizona, and then he was traded to the Houston Texans in 2023. So let's kind of get into his background of playing guard and tackle for Arizona and Houston. Uh, in 2020, he played mostly left tackle for Arizona and had a PFL grade of 43. So in 2021, he split time between right guard and right tackle. And these are his, his snap counts in 2021. He played right guard for 612 snaps and played right tackle in 20, I'm sorry, played right tackle for 231. So that gives you position flexibility uh, for him. So that kind of Makes him like a Ravens guy because he can play multiple positions. But um, back in 2022, he went back to tackle and played that for played right tackle for one game, then played left tackle for the rest of the games for Arizona. Then he was traded to the Texans, and for the Texans, he played the very first game at guard versus the Ravens. Then he went back to tackle and played tackle for the Texans in game two, three, eight, and fifteen. And then he played a little bit in the playoff game versus the Ravens again. But I think Tunsil came back, and that's why he didn't play in those other games. 
So um, what I would say with signing Josh Jones, he adds competition to the right tackle spot because obviously left tackle is locked up with um, Ronnie Stanley, uh, barring injury. So he puts competition on the right tackle. You don't just hand the job for Lele. And uh, I'm going to go back and look at some some Jones film. And I'm just I'm thinking off the top of my head that he may be better than Falele already. But whoever we bring in for those positions, make them work. Like, earn your spot. And I, I, I'm going to keep going back to this. I don't think Simpson earned his spot last year. I don't. I don't think Simpson earned his spot. I think Ronnie has earned his spot for, for longevity. And, and just he just earned it. Linda Baum's spot. I think Linda Baum and Ronnie's spot is secure. Those other three spots have to be earned. Even with my guy. Y'all know I like Ben Cleveland. He needs to earn that right, right guard spot if he's going to play for whoever they bring in. Salah got to earn if he's going to play. Um, Makari, if, I don't know what they're going to do with Makari if he's going to play. Falele, uh, was it Josh Jones, whoever, whoever we got that's going to play O-line, earn them. Earn them. Don't just, like the competition last year between Simpson and, Sa and Salah, there was no competition. There was no competition. And again, I don't know why Ben Cleveland can't play left guard. That still baffles me. But for some reason, he can't play left guard. I feel like he should have been that. That should have been a three, three-man three competition. Salah, Simpson, Cleveland. But for some reason, Cleveland can't play left. But I don't want to go back in that soapbox. It, it is what it is. So that's what I got about John, uh, Josh Jones. Now let's go to my last topic for today. Mina Kimes. So Mina Kimes is one of the um, the people from the Four Letter Network that I – that I will listen to, that I don't mind listening to. Uh, she's one of the personalities that I've grown to respect. I think her insight is um, genuine. I think uh, she does her research on situations. I think her her she's not a clickbaity personality that's trying to say stuff to get you to just click on her 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 site or her 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 takes or whatnot. I think she's not trying to hit you with the hot take. I think she genuinely. Is thoughtful in her her takes about different things. So she recently came out with um, a fit with a a cornerback for Baltimore, and let's see what she had to say and who she was talking about. Fit for Stephon Gilmore. Love him going to the Baltimore Ravens, a team that again battled injuries mm. at cornerback last year. Rakia Sin, Marlon Humphrey were down early in the year or during the summer. They had to sign Arthur Mollett, who had a great year for them. Ronald Darby, Ronald Darby just left. They need to meet a guy who can step in and be an outside corner for them on early downs. If they want to blitz and they want to play man coverage, Gilmore can hold up as well. I think Humphrey's best kind of playing outside on early downs, moving inside, playing the slot in passing downs. Gilmore gives you a lot of flexibility. He's a mature veteran. He's a good tackler. Uh, to me, I think just a, a win-now player for a win-now team in Baltimore. Yeah, this makes a lot of sense, especially for a defense that seems to incorporate veteran free agents near the end of free agency at the end of every year who end up having great seasons for them. Uh, and I think Gilmore would continue that trend. Uh, Bill alluded to his ability to play man coverage, which, you know, the Ravens certainly play a fair amount of. They blitz a lot. But I also like it for this stage in his career because uh, he would come from a very cover one heavy Dallas defense to a Ravens defense where he'd be playing more quarters. He would have more safety help from their elite safety duo. So I like it for him as well as he gets a bit older. Uh, to me, this makes a ton of sense. So we all know Gilmore is a former All-Pro. Like his, in the past, Gilmore was locked down. He was, he was one of those guys at cornerback. But let's talk about recently, you know, as far as last year versus with the Cowboys. And I'm going to give you some numbers to kind of compare him to our cornerbacks that we have on the team now. More specifically, Brandon Stevens and, and Marlon Humphreys. So, um, Gilmore last year, he gave up, he was had a 50, 56 percent catch rate, gave up 734 yards, five TDs, and two interceptions. So let's compare that to Marlon Humphreys and Brandon Stevens. Marlon Humphreys had a 52 percent catch rate, gave up 244 yards, one TD, and one interception. Now this seems like, hey, he's way better than Stephon Gilmore because he gave up way less yards, um, less touchdowns, and only had one less interception. Keep that, keep, just hold, hold your horses. Brandon Stevens, 63% catch rate, 814 yards given up, gave up two touchdowns and had two interceptions. Now you think about Brandon Stevens, it looks like, hey, Brandon Stevens gave up more yards. He's worse than Stephon Gilmore, but he gave up less touchdowns, had the same amount of interceptions. 
There's one key stat that I didn't throw up there that I'm going to tell you about now, and, and this, that I wrote it down. Snaps. Check this out. Marlon only had 553 snaps. Stephon Gilmore doubled Marlon's snaps this year. He had 1,100, no, 1,055 snaps. But B. Steve had more than all of them. B. Steve had 1,206 snaps. So even though Marlon had a lot less yards, that's because he played half the snaps that Stephon Gilmore had. So if Stephon Gilmore would be one of those right price guys, I would love to see him added to our our cornerback room, and that would give us a lot more flexibility on that back end to to even slide Marlon into the slot, you know, to do some of the things that he did before we got Kyle. When Marlon was the guy that slid into the slot, Marlon was really dangerous in there. Marlon really excelled as a slot corner when he was able to, you know, slide in and do some things and, and work in there with those guys. So that's um really interesting, you know, if you if Gilmore could be one of those guys. So um, that's all I got for you today. I really want to let you know about the draft coverage that we got coming up on this channel. Uh, so last year we had a great time. We're going to run it back again this year. And if you wasn't with us last year for the draft coverage, we had myself, Chris Just Joking, which we had the entire Deep Cover podcast. Chris Just Joking, Michael Crawford, Kerry Stevens. We're going to run it back with our whole roundtable crew, myself, Hendo, uh, OTR, Mike, um, B, and Jose. So all of us will be here for draft coverage on day one. I think most of us are running back for day two, but we're not doing day three. Definitely not doing day three at all. But we'll all be here for day one. I'm not sure who will be here for day two. I know I'll be here for day two. But um, Draft Coverage will be here. You'll have some really thoughtful, insightful thoughts about almost every prospect that um, will be picked for day one and day two. And again, me and Chris will start talking about receivers, I think, Wednesday. Because Chris's birthday is Tuesday. And Mike's birthday is today. So if you follow OTR Mike, wish him a happy birthday. And then if you follow Chris, I think his birthday is Tuesday. So happy birthday to those guys. And this is Coach Evans with uh, Sip the Tyler Films. I'll see y'all soon, man. Peace and love. Like the video. Share. Comment. If you're not subscribed, please do so. And I'll see y'all soon. Peace and love.